Probably one of the more frustrating aspects for anybody who does nomad living or even just has a work vehicle that they put want to have like comforts of home in is trying to find yourself something to make coffee with. Well, today I'm going to be reviewing this little guy over here. This is the Black & Decker single serve unit from Amazon. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not impressed. I mean, you shouldn't really be impressed with a coffee maker that basically costs $25. And my expectations were low, but damn, son. Okay, let's get right into talking about the unit. Comes with this plastic cup, apparently it's 16 ounces. Comes with a lid on the cup. There is a little bit of a silicone seal on the top of it. There are holes on the top of it as well, so there's nothing to stop any fluid from coming out of those holes or anything like that. The unit itself, over here, little LED indicator to see if it's on or running. This over here is the press button for turning the unit on. Then you have the top load area over here. Conveniently enough, there's a little hole at the top here, so if you overspill it, overfill, you're gonna spill it, your water out. And I did measure, so at least one of these fits into here, just below the maximum fill line. You have the little filter here for your drip coffee. You also have a holder for they say these things take coffee pods. I'm not sure what that means. You'll notice on the bottom here, there's nothing fancy. It's just plastic. There's no warming plate, which I mean makes sense because the entire cup is plastic. Uh, for this one here, let's see what it says. They always put these on the bottom, right? 120 volts, 60 hertz, 650 watts. Okay. I've already used this twice. Not even trying to brew coffee with it yet. Everybody knows you get a new appliance, you just run it through, right? And make sure that there's no plastic smell. I'm not detecting much plastic smell from here now. I'm still detecting plastic smell from here. I mean, it's $25. What do you expect? So my van's already fired up. Put the charging system on it. How about I just give this the old run through some water? Because I even haven't I haven't even tried any coffee yet. Frankly don't want to. You'll definitely have to remove that plastic cap lid. Just give it a nice little Fill up here. Cup under there. Comes with a very short, I want to say this is like two foot cable on it. So, because they don't want you to trip over this thing, apparently. I'm going to call bullshit on that. The other frustrating thing that I've got right now is the inverter that I've set up on here is the Sunforce 2500 watt one. But, the problem with the 2500 watt unit is that the built-in plugs on here are apparently limited somehow to the amount of voltage that they put out but they don't tell you how much voltage is actually limited to putting out. So, one way or the other, I'm either gonna use the new plugs that I put into here for the full 15 amps, or maybe this built-in one is gonna work just fine for me. One way or the other, we're gonna find out. The other thing too is that little thing for turning the unit on is sketch as fuck. 
that's just a little push switch just to push it on. Like, this is incredibly unsafe. Okay, the light's on right now. But I don't know if it's brewing or not. Ah, the button still pressed in from the last time. It's the sound of success, people. Now, because it's got the only push switch on there, I had unplugged this before. I didn't press that thing in, so it was automatically engaged when I plugged it in and turned it on, which I'm not impressed with. And to top it all off, let's say if, God forbid, you wanted to stop the brew for some reason or another, if it's spilling out or something else. I mean, yes, you can unplug the cord, but why wouldn't you put a switch on the thing? To their credit at least, or to whatever, at least right now it's working on the inverter with the built-in plugs. We'll see if it finishes though. I'm also checking down here because I've got a charge indicator on the battery just to make sure I'm not drawing too much amperage away from whatever I've got going on. So before when I was running the engine, the charge indicator on here was saying 14 something or other volts, 100% on the auxiliary battery. Now it's saying 12.8 volts, and it's hovering around 85, 86%. Looks like the cycling stopped. The battery power immediately went back up to 14.0 volts, 100% capacity. And the light has shut off for the unit, so I guess that's how it completes the cycle or whatever. Anyways. So, what are my thoughts? Well, I mean, if you're really desperate for trying to get a really cheap coffee, tea, hot water maker for yourself in either your kitchen or even in a mobile environment like this one, 
it'll work. But it, I, I'm not very impressed. I don't care about having a clock on this thing. I don't care about having brew functions or anything like that. But the safety components to it just seem lackluster. Uh, really sketch. But I mean, that took us like, what, maybe five minutes and we do have a little bit of hot water there for ourselves. Now pro tip, if you do decide to get this for yourself, and say for example you decide to put in more than one of these, say we just brewed one and we wanted to brew a second one, I would highly recommend, because you have to pop the top open and that exposes that little um, shower for the percolator, you should give it a few minutes to cool down because the percolator is actually still active and you can have it splash up at you. Um, almost found that out the hard way. So, not over the moon about this, probably going to return it because at the end of the day, that's terrible. But I mean, for 25 bucks, if you can live with those kind of problems, you might be alright. Anyways, I hope this is helpful to someone out there that wants to know more about these particular things. I'm going to waste this hot water out somewhere because I know for a fact it's going to be piled in with lots of BPA. I don't care what the company says.